Next movement is the floor flutter. We place you on the ground with a towel underneath your forehead to keep a neutral cervical spine. We're going to start with the thumbs up with the arms at 9 and 3 o'clock. We're going to emphasize the squeeze of the shoulder blade for scapular stability on this movement. So we start the thumbs up, do 10 reps there, then move it into the thumbs forward position and then into the thumbs down position with 10 reps of each of those positions. And change the emphasis of the muscles in the scapulae. It's a slow, small squeeze on this movement. It's not a big, gigantic movement. And it's, even though it's called flutter, it's not done fast. Next progression of this, either progression or regression, depending on how you want to look at it. We're going to use uh, put you up on an incline, which is sometimes easier for some clients because it reduces the influence of gravity here and do the flutters in the same position. Again, keeping the arms at 9 and 3 o'clock. We're going to emphasize the squeeze of the shoulder blades. The thumbs up the thumbs forward and the thumbs down. Same principle here, we're going to go for 10 reps of each position, emphasizing a slow, small movement on this. The key thing here is now the towel's not there, you got to keep your cervical spine in a neutral position. You're going to be up on the bench with the chin slightly tucked on this to keep that spine in neutral. Next movement is the wall slide. You're going to have the client place their head, upper back and butt against the wall and we're going to emphasize a neutral curve in the lumbar spine. We don't want it excessively arched, and we don't want it excessively flattened here either. We're trying to develop some scapular humeral rhythm here and working on upward rotation and depression. Uh, the client's going to attempt to slide their back of their wrists and elbows along the wall and then back down it. The main compensation you'll frequently see here is as the client slides their wrists up, they're going to try and rob from their lumbar spine because they don't have proper thoracic extension and overarch their low back. So if they have a problem with that, you can scoot their feet out away from the wall a little bit, and that'll help to de-emphasize that uh, excessive arch in their lumbar spine. Here, here's a side view of it, and you can see Mike has a pretty good range of motion here. He's able to do a real good job of keeping his wrists and elbows against the wall as he slides up there when you're not seeing any kind of excessive arching in his lumbar spine on this as well. This movement should be pain-free as well. This shouldn't have any pain in this movement. They want to stop short of any kind of pain that a client may have on this. Next up is our YTWL series. We're going to have the client emphasize keeping their spine in neutral position here with their chin tucked. They're going to do a Y position, whether it's raising the arms into a 10 and 2 position. We really want to emphasize driving through the scapula here and keep the arms as straight as possible and pull the shoulder blade down and back. We do not want to see that shoulder shrug up towards the ears. We're pulling the shoulder blades down and back, keeping the arms in line with the lower trapezius fibers in that 10 and 2 position. Then we're going to move into the T with the thumbs up externally rotated, emphasizing the shoulder blade squeeze again, pinching the borders of the shoulder blade together emphasizing the middle traps on this movement. It's nice, slow, controlled squeezes. Then we're going to go into the W. We're going to bend the elbows 90 degrees, pull the humeral joint down to about a 45 degree angle in relation to the torso, and make a W motion as viewed from behind here. Now the next move we're going to go into is the L. We're going to hold the top of the W, bring the elbows up to 90 degrees of abduction, and then externally rotate. So we're getting a static hold with the shoulder blades at the top and we're externally rotating the humerus on the last part of the movement here. Doing it up on an incline tends to make the movement a little bit easier than doing it uh, with the bench flat. Next movement is the dynamic blackburn. The client's going to place their hands on their rear end with the palms facing up. They're going to retract their shoulder blades and then abduct and externally rotate once they get to 90 degrees and raise the arms up into that Y position, similar to the YTWL series. And then come back down. As they pass 90 degrees, they'll internally rotate the humerus so the thumbs point back down. So it's a very integrative movement combining lots of different movements of the shoulder and scapula here. Key thing is a set and retraction. Keep the cervical spine in neutral. And try not to excessively arch the lumbar spine. We'll reset, squeeze the shoulder blades and then raise the arms up into that Y position and then come back down. It's a great exercise for kind of establishing that scapular humeral rhythm again. Next movement of the re reach, roll, and lift. Client's going to get down on their elbows in a rock position here with their butt towards their heels. They're going to reach the arm out as far as they can and then roll their thumb over, externally rotating the humerus, depress at the same time, 
and then trying to lift with a straight elbow off the ground. It's not a real gigantic movement, so you'll see a lot of clients compensate by bending their elbows when they try and lift the arm. Don't let that happen. Let them know that it's a small, short movement here. And we're going to alternate sides, and we'll usually hold it for a static hold of about three to five seconds on each repetition at the top here. Great exercise for engaging the lower trapezius, and we use it as an activation exercise. It works fantastic. But you'll see that some of those compensations, you got to be very, very diligent in how you coach this exercise. We're going to show you from the side view here, too. And one of the key things in doing it is really reaching that arm out as far as you can. That'll help facilitate you get a little pre-stretch to turn on the lower traps here. And clients, for some reason, always want to try and just lift their arm as high as they possibly can, so you'll really, really see that elbow break, and they'll try and bend that thing to lift their hand up as high as they can. Let them know that's not the goal. So it's very similar to what you'll see on a pull down where we're going to teach that active depression. This helps to integrate that pattern. Next exercise, we'll use this as a uh, progression from the wall slide. It is the behind the neck band pull down. We're going to take a mini band. We'll put the hands fairly close on it. You're going to try to attempt to pull the band apart as well as pulling it down behind the neck. So we're training again that upward rotation pattern and depression. So another great exercise for engaging the lower traps here. We want to see the forearms be vertical at the bottom on this in relation to the ground. So not way out, not too close together on it. And we also want to make sure that the client is not uh, protruding their neck forward and getting that forward head posture. We don't want to reinforce that. So again, trying to maintain neutral position here. You're going to keep the core lightly engaged here as well. So we're not getting any of that excessive lordosis either. Next movement is the band pull apart. We're going to hold a mini band with the uh, arms at 10 and 2. And we're going to try and spread the band apart. You can adjust the tension on this by moving the hands either closer together or further apart on the band. The palms can either be facing the ground or facing up like a T. We're just going to attempt to engage the scapula here and pull the band apart. It'll end right around collarbone level there. So we're integrating into a standing position here as well. Kettlebell armbar. This is a more advanced exercise that requires some coaching and some spotting in the early stages. We're going to take a light kettlebell, post it up, lay on the floor on your back, and then we're going to integrate a rolling pattern here while keeping the arm vertical and the shoulder blade packed so that we're integrating some lower trap activation with some active pec stretching on the front side. And while keeping the arm vertical, we're going to roll the hips towards the ground while keeping that arm vertical and stick the chest out. We typically use uh, five five-second holds here. The arm, you'll notice, is a little bit externally rotated. We're going to move in and out of this position. The key concept here is keeping that arm nice and vertical so you're moving your body around that arm. And we have the Statue of Liberty, excellent PNF pattern here. Lower left position, cross diagonal to the upper right hand position. We're getting flexion, external rotation, and abduction all at the shoulder in a triplanar movement. Trying to stay nice and tall, straight with the body, getting a nice cross body PNF move here. Finish in in a scapardly, downward rotated position away from a shrug here. And we have our double glute hip bridge in a supine line position. The first cue that we say is squeeze the rear end together, actively contract the glutes. We squeeze the rear end together, drive the heels through the floor, and looking to get hip extension. So we're looking, can the hips stay high and even via hip extension, not lumbar extension. So his cue is to squeeze the rear end, drive the heel through the floor, not just extend or arch the back. So he's actually getting a bilateral hip extension move here. Then we're going to go into a passive lock bridge where he's going to passively lock that left hip into flexion. And now we're working on unilateral hip extension, which now we go, so our right hip here is getting extension. Actively contr contract the glutes, drive the heel through the floor, and extend through that right hip. So that left leg is contralaterally being flexed while one's being contralaterally extended. So now he's just switching sides here. So again, now we're working on can we keep the hips high and even through hip extension. So as we go to the one leg, now there's going to be some torsion through the spine. 
that we try to avoid here. Then we're going to get a tennis ball. Then we're going to try to place it at the base of the rib cage, not so much tucked into that hip crease. So now we call this an active single lock bridge. So now he's actively extending the right leg and actively flexing the left leg now. So as opposed to passively keeping it there, he's got to actively provide opposite actions of the hips here. So he's going to tuck that tennis ball on the other side for visual here for you guys. Notice that we're trying to keep the tennis ball at the base of the rib cage, not so much tucked into that spine here. It's very common for that tennis ball to squirt out. We just try to put it back in. So again, now this is our progress move, getting excellent active opposing forces of the hip here. Active right hip flexion, active left hip extension here, active lock bridge. What we have here in the lower extremity activation, single leg cross leg bridge. Very similar to the passive lock bridge, but now we're just getting a nice little passive stretch here of the uh, left rotators of the hip here. So again, this is just a nice move here to activate the left glutes for hip extension here. Again, we're trying to see can these hips remain high and even, and we're just getting a nice little active uh, passive stretch here of the right hip in a stretch while the left hip gets active extension. So again, high and even with the hips. Then we switch bridging up into what we call a bridge marching. So now we're just again integrating some dynamic movement in into here. So we're holding a hip extension, hips high and even, and then we're alternating march, and we generally like to get a nice little pause there. So again, now we're getting an active right hip flexion with left hip extension, which we like to hold into pause. So again, hips high and even, fairly demanding move if it's done correctly, very deliberately. Then we have a bridge, now what we call knee extension. So now we're just holding a bridge in a nice position here while we're just extending the knees. Again, trying to keep the heels firmly planted through the floor, through the extension, and the hips high and even. Notice that the two femurs are trying to stay parallel with each other. Bridge with knee extension. Again, opposite action here. There's a torsional force through the spine, but he's resisting that movement, staying nice, high, and even. Now we have a sideline clamp position. We're in a hook line position. Thumbs on the anterior superior iliac spine, fingertips on the glute medius. Now we're performing again external rotation at the hip here, contracting and trying to isolate that glute medius for a nice activation exercise. Notice the feet stay on top of each other, and the hips do not roll posteriorly. You'll see a lot of substitution with the hip movement here and not knee movement. So the knees don't have to go very high, but the hips have to remain very, very still to maintain a pure glute medius activation here. Keeping the hips nice and still, glute medius activation here, as opposed to the glute maximus as in the bridges. And we have a progression of the sideline clam into a quadruped knee raise. We're in a scapular stable position. Now now we're demanding a little bit extra from the core and the scapular stabilizers. It's the same movement that we're looking at now. Knees coming up to the side with a pure external rotation, a little bit of horizontal ad adduction here. So again we're looking, can the hips stay nice and still? Oftentimes we'll take a rolled up towel and place it on the back to make sure that it doesn't fall. A lot of times we'll also try to cue them to keep a cup of water on their back. So scapular stable up position, strong push-up position, strong core position, and now we're just getting a nice knee raise to the side here. Glute medius activation. Now we'll progress the knee raise into a leg raise. Again, strong scapular stable position, strong core position, and with a longer lever arm, we just demand more from the glute medius fibers here. So again, this is just more of a Notice that the knee doesn't have to get too high or the foot doesn't have to get too high off the floor here because we just want it mainly coming from that hip here. You'll see a lot of substitution from the lumbar spine here if they don't have it from the hip here. So again, we just switch sides here. This move is a lot harder than it looks. Get the right glute medius activated. Lead with the heel towards the ceiling. Here we have the prone figure four, which is one of our corrective exercises here. And we're activating the hip in a transverse plane of motion. So we're keeping the low back stable as we can, assuming that figure four position we call with the shoe behind the knee, hips nice and flat. 
Notice that the knee is only going to come up a couple inches off the ground because we don't want the hips to raise or the low back to rotate as well and substitute movement. So this is a great third dimensional move for the hip here. Nice deliberate contraction here and isolate as much as we can that lateral hip musculature. Here's our X-band walk. Getting some more glute activation here, except now we're in a nice standing tall position. And we have a band here to facilitate also a two birds with one stone external rotation of the shoulders as well. Great for your upper class clients or lower class clients. So we now have to get external rotation of the shoulders and also glute activation. Toes straight ahead, feet straight ahead, nice tall posture, trying not to tilt from side to side. Here's our bent knee lateral band walk here. Similar to the X band walk, except now we're just getting a lower extremity. Feet straight ahead, feet flat on the floor as we're coming through here, leading with the heels and leading with the knees as well to get a nice turn on. Notice that we're trying not to get any valgus of the knee here. Head up, chest is up, facing a nice forward position on both ways. Again, nice glute activation exercise here on your feet. Forward and reverse band walk. So again, as opposed to the bent knee lateral band walk, we just added a forward walk for anterior hip and a reverse band walk for posterior hip. So a lot of times we'll put these four moves together and do what we call a four-way bent knee lateral band walk, forward, backward, side to side. Here we have our passive single leg lowering. So we're going to use a strap or a band for one leg. Try to keep that right leg real straight, shoulders and head relaxed. So we're trying to keep one leg passively as straight as we can and that other leg actively as straight as we can too. So this is a dual move here. This is also a good core exercise here for the anterior core here and it's also a good passive stretch in that hamstring. So we just switch at the bottom which keeps our lumbar spine in a real safe position. Get a nice stretch, leg straight, both toes dorsiflexed, ankles dorsiflexed as much as possible no external rotation of the, of the foot as well. So shoulders relaxed, head relaxed, passive single leg lowering here. Very important that the knee stay as straight as you can. Getting a good passive stretch of that left hamstring. Then we go right into the active straight leg lowering. So now we don't have the band passively keeping the right leg up there so it's a little bit more difficult. So again we still want to try to keep both knees as straight as we can both ankles dorsiflex, shoulders relaxed, head relaxed, and notice the hands in an externally rotated position, which we always try to do in a supine position. So again, this is a little bit more of a demanding core exercise here. Very deliberate move, dorsiflex ankles, terminal knee extension as much as possible.